we're back again for another episode of Roofer Reflections. And I am so excited today because I've been wanting to get Martin on the show for a very long time. So did you jump into the roof industry after sort of schooling or was there was there a story there? I graduated from college um, and I didn't really have set goals. And, and that's something you learn in life, you know, and my goal was to play golf in NCAA Division One. And then I got a scholarship Division One. I. I was really excited about this. When I graduated, I felt like I accomplished my goal. So it was like golf, I was not so excited about it anymore. And golf, regardless, is like impossible to make the PGA Tour. Then I was working a golf course uh, as an assistant pro and, and parking carts. One of the uh, person that worked there said, Martin, you should park cars. My son did it like 10 years ago and he made money as a valet. Said, oh man, that's great. I can work at night and day so I can, now it doesn't offend, like it doesn't go against my, still my golf thinking. So I started parking cars and that's where the, the click hit for me. But I meet these guys that park their cars. They have like the young guys, there's, there's a few of them that had like F350 diesel with the screen that comes up now, screens are all in the cars. But back then in 2007, there, there, there was not like, like, wow, who are you guys? They have big wheels, they had Hummer, that big trucks, it was incredible. I'm like, I want to know more what you're doing. I can barely pay my rent. Uh, I said, how do you, you know, you guys are obviously making a lot of money. You're like rock star. You're here, you're here till two, three in the morning. You're blowing money. Like, I don't understand. They said, yeah, we're, we're contractors. So we're siding contractors. One guy's a concrete contractor. One guy's a drywall contractor. I'm like, man, that's awesome. Contractor get up from sunrise to sunset. Like they work hard. It's long hours to get up early and you're here till two, three in the morning. And that was after cultivating a relationship with them. And one of them is like, oh, Martin, and don't worry about that. There's so much work out there. That was a click. There's so much work out there. If tomorrow I miss my wake up call and I show up late and I, even if I get fired from this job, it doesn't really matter because there's so much work out there. I can name my price. Everybody wants to work. There's a shortage of contractors. But it became a duty to take the con out of contractor. I didn't understand that at that moment. I'm like, I got to take the con out of contractor. If I'm going to work at 630 and there's cars on the road, it's like, damn it, somebody is working harder than me that wants it more than me. Let's try six o'clock. Let's try 530. Let's try five o'clock. And then at five o'clock, there's nobody else. Like, all right, this is where I got to be to be different. I didn't have construction experience a lot of contractors don't no roofing experience no uh, business experience no money just went into uh, started from there just from passion to solve you know businesses solving uh, problems in the, uh, the environment so fixing that gap that that was that it was what are some of the key learnings that you had throughout that process of growth um i went to an event and this guy uh greg wallach from uh, best roofing so driven and I asked him a bunch of questions for 30 minutes at the end he says barney three things you need to hire a trainer training and the second one's recruiting we started using the disc assessment to do recruiting it helped us a lot we hired a lot of wrong people because we used the wrong disc wrong assessment but i did over four thousand interviews myself because i'm so passionate about hiring the right people i can tell you some stories about that why and then the last thing is the structure the roofing machine structure i feel like we've done a phenomenal job at doing this and creating a roofing machine one of the biggest thing i learned through it it took me probably five years when we started um it, it still had the confidence to to Listen to your voice, your inner voice, but inside it tells you like, hey, go harder. You have more, you can do more. But then you're looking around and your friends maybe going to the bars or they hanging out playing a lot of sports, different things. And it's a lot of distraction. You know what, I won't cut off everything. I'm not going out anymore. I'm not, I'm not hanging out. I'm just gonna put all my attention to this thing, this roofing thing. I feel like it's gonna work. I don't know what it means. I won't put it all in. Um, so every single decision I made to that point is to, grow the company but allowing yourself to listen to that voice inside because your brain says i want you to go out with your friends hey no you're working too hard man those little voice that wants to bring you down um allowing yourself to listen to your inner voice there's a great book relentless by tim grower talks about this um that that helped me a lot